Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the next video in my series, Working in VR, where every episode I look at a different productivity related VR app that lets you both collaborate and work solo in virtual reality. Today we are looking at Meta Workrooms and Meta Workrooms is fantastic. This is a great collaboration piece of software. It's very collaboration focused, lets you hold meetings both in VR and out. And we're going to jump right in and take a look at it now. All right, so here we are on the headset. Now there is an agent, just like the other applications I showed you, there's an agent that you have to install. This one works on Windows and Mac, and you only need to install that if you want to control your computer, which is kind of the whole point of this. So uh, after you get that installed, all you need to do is download the Workrooms app from the app store that's built into the headset, and then go and launch Workrooms. Now, when you go in here, you need to create a desk because this will allow you to see your keyboard in a pass-through. So we're gonna go ahead and create our desk. And all we're gonna do is just grab one corner over to the other corner, let go. Then we're gonna put our palm down to get the height and we are gonna confirm. I'm gonna skip the headset adjustment and then go into workrooms. Now, as with my other videos, this is not gonna be a full tutorial on Meta Horizons Workrooms. If you wanna see that, I'm happy to do a video on that. Just let me know down in the comment section. This is just gonna show you how you can be productive in here. Now, the most basic form of being productive in here is controlling our computer and having virtual displays in front of us. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, as you install that option, you'll see multiple computers kind of show up on here. Right now, we just have the one MacBook Pro, but we would have additional ones if we had it, this agent installed on other machines that were turned on. So let's connect to the MacBook Pro. Now the MacBook Pro has one screen. So when we connect, it brings up our screen and we have it in front of us, but you see that we have spaces for two more displays. So we can very easily add another display just by hitting the plus. Now that functionality works on Mac, but it does not currently work on Windows. They're gonna be adding that, but I have a tutorial on how you can do some virtual displays in Windows. So um, I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna see that. And that's a way to get around this limitation in workrooms for Windows. Now we can go ahead and just hide this for more real estate. And you know we have these two displays. If we wanna change the orientation of them, we can just kind of drag it and say we want this one on the left, we can drag it over. So now that one's on the left, this one's in the center. Now say we want to shift the whole thing over, we don't like this orientation, we can either do it down here and move it, or we can just come up to here, move it to center, and that'll just shift everything over. So now that uh, blank screen is on the left, our primary screen is in front of us here. So in its most basic forms, we are productive. We have access to our display. We can add up to three displays. So let's just do another one here and move that back to the center. And then we're gonna move everything back. So now we have three screens in front of us. We can rotate around and look at them. Now that's the limit to it. You can't change the size of these screens. You can change the resolution, but you can't change the size. You can't change the position other than these three positions. You can't have them float around. They're just fixed in here, but they're very clear. Uh, the latency is very low in here and we can do anything we need to on our computer. Now, that's the solo working aspect of Meta Workrooms, and it's pretty powerful. It's a good experience. You get a, a feeling like you're sitting in an office, but where Workrooms really excels is with the collaboration. So to show you that collaboration aspect, I'm going to go ahead and connect to one of my rooms here. I'm just going to go to the Evnos test room. So now what this is doing is this is connecting to our room and from this room, people with MetaQuest headsets can join this room uh, through an invite that you can provide them. But the cool thing is people outside of VR can also join this room via video conferencing. So this is uh, the room. You can see I put my custom logo up there. There is some customization you can do. And right now there's these four seats. There's the board up there that you can draw on. And when people join the conference through a link outside of VR, 
they'll show up on this screen and they'll be able to see what's going on inside this room. And I'll show you that in just a minute. But before I do, I want to show you some of the other rooms. So this is a great collaboration room. And again, I'm not going to show you all the details, but I do want to show you this, that you can come in and customize this room and change it to these different layouts. So this breakout room is great because we can have multiple groups in here having private conversations. So as each group is at one of these tables, they're kind of in a bubble and anybody at the other tables will hear just the light conversation. They won't really be able to hear the detailed conversation. But if somebody is sitting at the center seat here, they'll be able to be heard by all these breakout tables. So this is a great way to you know, have people in your conference and then go into a breakout room where you can have private discussions and then you can all come back into maybe a meeting room once the breakout session is over. It'll bring all those people back in and we're in a meeting room. Now we're not limited to these four seats. As people join, we'll be able to resize the room and we can resize the table to accommodate the people that are in here. Now there's different room themes. This is just one of them. I'm not going to go through all these because it's not really, really critical to the productivity aspect of this application. But I do want to show you the whiteboard. So if we gonna if we click on go to the room whiteboard, so we're gonna grab our controller and then we're gonna go and find an empty wall. We are gonna continue. And then we're gonna just grab this and put it up against a physical wall that we have. So we'll kind of position it there and we're gonna confirm the position. Now we're gonna hit continue and now we can come, flip our controller around and start writing on our whiteboard. Now, when we go back to our seat and we can just walk back to our desk, we don't need to do anything on the controller. We'll walk back to our desk area. We'll sit down and we'll hit continue on the desk. And now you can see what we put on the whiteboard is up on there and we're back at our desk. Could put the controller down now and use our hands again if we want. Now, what the thing about this whiteboard is it's persistent to the room. So when you leave this room and come back, whatever you put on the whiteboard will remain on there. This is one of the best collaboration spaces that I've seen in VR so far. So another thing we can do is we can connect to our computer again. Now, when we're in this room, we only have access to one display, regardless of how many displays we have on our computer. But now that we're in here, we can go and share our screen. If we click on share the screen, hit continue, it'll replace the whiteboard with our screen and now everybody that's in the room and everybody that's connected via the link outside of VR will be able to see our computer screen and other people within the room can share as well. And uh, so you can do presentations, you can collaborate on whatever is on the screen and then you can go and turn that off and use the whiteboard if you want to diagram things out. But I want to show you now what it looks like when somebody joins this remotely. Okay, so we are at the website for this room and what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this link and then we're going to go into Chrome just to open it in another browser and we'll paste that link in. So this is a link to the meeting for this room. So we're just gonna say my name is Steve and we're gonna join the room. Now you can see it's using my camera there and we're gonna go ahead and join. And there we go, we are connected. You can see from the computer that we can see inside of VR. So there I am waving, that's my avatar. And then on the screen, we can see the people that are joining outside of VR just by video. Now you can see I have a view into the room. I can see the whiteboard as I change the room. Now it leaves the people connected that are connected outside of VR. And from outside of VR, you can see that I see the new representation of the room. If other people were sitting around here, I'd be able to see them. So this is fantastic from a collaboration aspect. So again, this is not intended to be a full review of this application. This is just to give you an idea of what it looks like for the working solo and in collaboration. So let's get to the, some of the pros and cons of this.
Okay, so let's start with the pros. And the first pro is that you can share your collaboration with people both in VR and outside of VR, and it is a great experience for both of those people. There's several options for configuring the rooms for whatever type of meeting you want to have or those breakout sessions that allow for private uh, discussions and then allow you to come back to a bigger room for an open discussion. We have that very large, persistent whiteboard that'll stay there through the sessions and even if everybody leaves the room and then comes back at a later time for another meeting, whatever you put on that whiteboard will still be there. It has a decent solo working environment. You can have three screens. You can create virtual screens on Mac. Uh, that's coming to Windows, but again, there is a workaround for Windows, so you can do it on that platform as well. The next pro is this optional pass through to see your keyboard or your laptop or whatever it is that you're using. And if you move that over to the side, you can even fit the keyboard and the mouse here to get a full view of your desk. That's huge from a productivity standpoint. Okay, so let's get to the cons now. And the first con is that this is not available on Linux. For, so for all you Linux users, you are out of luck on this one, unfortunately. Uh, the next thing is that it's only available on the Meta headsets. It's not available on Pico or SteamVR or anything like that because it is a Meta product. So I don't see that this will be expanded out to other platforms. I could be wrong, but uh, that's I'm not seeing that anytime in the near future. The next con is that there is not a lot of flexibility around those displays when you're working in that private space. You can have three displays, you can change the orientation uh, and the resolution, but that's about it. You can't change them freely in 3D space. You can't have more than three displays. You can't move them further away or closer to you. You're set in that fixed position. So that about sums it up for Meta Horizon Workroom. It's decent from a solo aspect. It's great collaboration aspect. And uh, as long as you're okay with being locked into the Quest headset, this might be an option for you. You can also check out the videos that I did on Virtual Desktop and Immersed if you want some more options. And vSpatial is going to be my next video in this series. So if you want to see those, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when those come out. If you have any questions on anything, let me know down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video.